Hello everyone, so happy to be hanging out with you on the absolute best day of the week. It's Friday and it has been an awesome week. Sharing, learning, we had some laughs. Let's finish this week strong. We're gonna start today by heading to the Middle East in the country of Iraq where a team of experts trying to piece together damaged historical artifacts after the Islamic militant group ISIS destroyed them in the city of Mosul. Here's video from 2015 where the Islamic State militants were smashing and destroying ancient artifacts at the Mosul Museum. Some of these statues were thousands of years old, all of them demolished. The reasoning behind this was part of a campaign by this terror group to topple and dissolve any cultural history that conflicted with their extreme beliefs and ideology. For three years, ISIS had control of Mosul, Iraq's second largest city, but Iraqi forces, with the help of the U.S.-led coalition, reclaimed the city in 2017 and defeated the extremist group's rule. But the damage was already done. So for years, experts have been in reconstruction mode, looking to restore the city's proud history. Our Michael Holmes has more on this Mosul Museum restoration project in Iraq. The fragmented artifacts in the Mosul Museum have been under repair by a team of Iraqi and French restoration experts for the past four years. They say it is a painstaking process to try to repair the shattered antiquities, a jigsaw puzzle of pieces that might never quite fit together again. One restorer says this is the most gratifying part, assembling and gluing the pieces although some are too crushed to use, others are missing altogether. The museum is just one of many ongoing rebuilding projects in Mosul. In March, church bells rang out again in another part of the city, part of a UNESCO effort to rebuild churches and mosques destroyed by decades of fighting in Iraq. Since 2018, UNESCO has raised more than $105 million for reconstruction efforts in Mosul. Mosul is the place where UNESCO has the largest commitment today in the world because the city deserves it, because the people of uh, Mosul deserve it, because we know what they've been through and the tragedies, the intimate tragedies they've been through over the last uh, decades. Another project is taking a more modern approach to maintaining the city's heritage. The Eye on Mosul Foundation is recording videos of witness testimonies of what life was like under ISIS rule, which will then be archived in the public library. A common theme of the projects is to rebuild as well as remember. But the director of the Mosul Museum says it is impossible to recreate what happened here without any scratches or imperfections, but those two are now part of Mosul's history. 10 second trivia, what is the name given to the second full moon in a calendar month? Pink moon, blue moon, blood moon, or harvest moon? Once in a blue moon, we get two full moons in one month, which typically occurs once every two or three years. Now, while we didn't see a blue moon last night, the April pink moon was shining brightly instead. Even though, despite its name, it doesn't appear shining pink, the bright golden orb is still something special of which to take notice in the nighttime sky. The pink moon is a nod to the bountiful blooming flowers and trees that the spring weather brings. Our CNN meteorologist Jennifer Gray has more on the origins of the nicknames of moons. Many of the moon's nicknames date back to the early Native Americans. They named each full moon in every month to help them keep track of their planting and harvesting schedule. The full moon in April is known as the pink moon, signaling the first appearance of the wild ground phlox, one of the earliest spring flowers. When you have two full moons in a calendar month, the second one is called the blue moon. One of the more notable moons, the harvest moon in October, also known as the hunter's moon or the blood moon. This is when the leaves are falling off the trees and the animals are fat. So this signaled to tribes it was time to hunt all they could to get them through that long winter. And another thing to note is that the moon does not appear pink during the pink moon, red during the blood moon, or blue 
during the blue moon. The only thing that can really alter the way we see the moon is if there's a lot of dust, haze, ash, or smoke in the atmosphere, the moon can sometimes have an orange or red glow. For our next story, we're going north of the border to Canada, where I'm giving a 10 out of 10 to a canine romance story that's doggone adorable. During the pandemic, two fur babies named Rolo and Sadie met when their fur parents moved next to each other. It was love at first sight, but after two years of bonding, times got rough when one of the owners had to move three hours away. Well, that didn't stop these long-distance doggy romantics from seeing each other. Our genie Moose has the story of the Romeo and Juliet of the dog world. When's the last time someone was this excited to see you after a separation? Meet Rollo and Sadie. Watch them meet after being apart and check out their faces when they FaceTime. This is the video that had viewers howling. Sadie, a husky and German shepherd cross, and Rollo, a Rottweiler shepherd mix, met during the pandemic when their owners moved into different apartments in the same house in the Canadian city of Edmonton. Sadie's never really been the biggest fan of other dogs, but when she met Rollo, she whined and cried and laid down on her back like she'd <laughs> just met the love of her life. Every time they see each other, he goes insane. But then Rollo's owner moved three hours away for a job opportunity. And we do FaceTime every Thursday night so the dogs can see each other. <laughs> the whining, the howling. Oh, no. Their reunions are joyous and their owners are also best friends. They say there's a chance they'll all move back under the same roof. But until then... That's your buddy, isn't it? Yeah, that's your buddy. During our remote interview, it was more sound than sight that set them off. He began looking for her, headed for the window. Rollo and Sadie are the Romeo and Juliet of dogs. For never was a story of more woe than this of Sadie and her Rollo. Parting may be such sweet sorrow, but reunions are a ball. Round of applause for that one. This story is giving me a little verklempt, though, because we're going to miss you next week. We're going to be off the air because our hardworking CNN team has their much-deserved spring break. Our final shout-out this week goes to Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Manitowoc, Lincoln High School, we see you rise up. One more thing. As you chase your dreams, there are going to be people who tell you that you can't. They'll say you're not good enough or it isn't possible. And sometimes maybe you'll start to doubt yourself or you won't see a clear path to your goal at times. But no matter what you're going through, just keep going. Outwork everyone every single day and believe in you. You are more powerful than you know. I'm Koi Wire. We are CNN 10. It's been a blessing to spend this week with you.